Welcome back to Andy Cooks, and today we're talking about Floody's favourite dessert, the pear tartatan. So the tartatan, which was actually classically normally made with apples, but you can make it with any fruit. Uh, pears work really well, peaches work really well, any fruit really you can make a tartatan out of. Uh, just the cooking time when you're making the caramel will change, but you kind of have to leave that to your intuition to figure out. But it's a French dessert. Uh, legend goes it was invented by a pastry chef called Carolyn Tan, I believe her name was, hence the name Tarte Tan. Uh, and she was making an apple pie and she overcooked the caramel and now we have the Tarte Tan. And um, thank goodness she did because it's a delicious dessert and it's really not that complicated to make. A few great techniques to pick up along the way here. Actually, there's not that many great techniques if you, unless you're making your own pastry, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, but the main technique is kind of using a caramel and learning how to control the caramel um, and control the temperature when you're making a caramel more importantly. So let's get stuck in, this is what you're gonna need. But just quickly, do me a favor, go smash that like button, it helps me out heaps. So this is what you're gonna need. Pears, obviously. So you want a nice firm pear, you don't want a soft pear. You want something that's gonna hold its shape and not go all mushy. Sugar, 150 grams of sugar. Like always, recipe will be below, so don't feel like you need to write this down. 50 grams of unsalted butter. A little bit of water and pastry butter puff pastry you can make your own pastry if you are confident in making puff pastry by all means make your own pastry you can even just make a rough puff um, where you grate the butter into it making pastry is one of the things that i don't do at home um, i do it every now and then if i have a lot of time but this is one of those desserts that i often make on a whim so it'll be eight o'clock at night i'll have a craving for something sweet i'll have some fruit here i've always got sugar butter uh, and I've usually got puff pastry in the freezer. So it can be pulled together pretty quickly um, and hence why I don't bother making my own pastry. The stuff you can buy in the shop is pretty good anyway. So, so I'm going to stop waffling, let's get stuck in. First up we're going to peel and cut our pears. So the tin you're going to use um, to cook this can range from anything really to you can do it in a cast iron skillet, they work really well. I like using this 20 centimeter or 8 inch cake tin. Uh, I think it works really well. You can kind of get four portions out of that pretty easily. Although I have been known to eat half of one of those in one sitting. But any any kind of, uh, any dish, you don't want a spring form cake tin cause the caramel might leak and that stuff's not fun to clean off your oven. It doesn't need to be like as deep as this. It only needs to really be about that deep max. Anyway, I'm gonna get these peeled and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I like to cut them. So, peers are peered. Peers are peered. Peers are peeled. Bloody hell, that was tricky. Uh, into halves. You can use a corer if you're doing this. The only thing I don't find with a corer is if you're not super accurate or your pears aren't perfectly shaped, which most aren't, naturally. Um, you might miss some of it anyway. So, in half, and then we're gonna go into thirds. So each quarter, you end up with three pieces. And then we're just gonna take the center out and you're going to end up with a piece of pear that looks like, oh, hello, piece of pear that looks like this. Uh, same thing if you're using apples, and I suggest if you're going to do this with apples, use Granny Smith apples. They, they, the tartness works really well on this. So I'm just going to put these into my tin because it's handy, and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, pears peeled, got it that time. Um, now you can do these in uh, our levers in lemon water so they don't oxidize, but we're gonna move pretty quickly here, so not too much of an issue for me right now. And just make sure that the amount of pears roughly covers the dish that you've got at the bottom. That means you know you're gonna get good coverage when it comes to making it. If anything, you, you probably want a little bit more than you think. Um, they might shrink, a, well they are gonna shrink a little bit when you're cooking them. And the last thing you want is to, when you're laying your pears out, um, not have enough. So we'll put those to the side and we're going to cut out a piece of puff pastry now. So with your puff, you want to, like I was saying before, use a butter puff. Um, just tastes better. If it is sticking a little bit, literally the, the, the heat from the palm of your hands on the plastic sheet will be enough to melt it. Chopsticks are there for a reason, I'll show you in a minute. Oh, broke the piece underneath, it's annoying. Anyway, we have our sheet of puff. Probably should have been a bit more patient 
and a bit of the frost bitter, but we'll get the rest of this back. All right, so we've got our sheet of puff. Take off one layer of plastic. Put your, uh, your tin of choice on there, and then you're just gonna run a knife. You want it slightly wider uh, than the dish itself, because you want to tuck it down the sides a bit. And when I say slightly, I mean like a centimeter. I don't know what a centimeter is in inches. I reckon it's about a quarter of an inch, maybe. Done. So, knife run around it. Take that off. Now, you're gonna put this back in the fridge or even the freezer. You wanna keep this really cold. All right, so we've got our pears, our sugar, our butter and our water. Time to start making some caramel. All right, so everything's ready. We've got a heavy base pot over a medium, medium heat or high heat right now. Sugar goes in. So the trick with caramel is that you don't stir it. You just kind of swirl it. So you're just gonna level it out like that. And we're gonna put a few dashes of water around the outside. That helps stop crystallization. And you kind of want to keep the water to as little as possible because you just have to basically evaporate it anyway before the sugar starts to caramelize. So we'll just let that do its thing. We'll keep it a close eye on it. So what's going to happen is that the, the sugar is going to melt and then it's going to start caramelizing. I'm going to put our pears in here. We're going to cook them briefly. Then we're going to put our butter in uh, just to make it nice and glossy and, and a bit more fatty. And then we'll put our pears back into our tin, put a pastry on top and we will bake it. That reminds me, I better turn my oven on. So the other thing that's worthwhile doing is having a pastry brush and a bit of water and just spraying this, well, just brushing down the sides of it. Looks like it's starting to crystallize. So it looks like the sugar's reforming effectively. Just brush it with a little bit of water and that'll stop that pretty quickly. So this is kind of a choose your own direction part of the journey. You can go really dark caramel, like almost bitter, like really bitter, um, or really light and anywhere in between. I like a pretty dark caramel. I think the bitterness plays off really well with the sweetness of the fruit, um, the ice cream on the top, and there is, it is still a lot of sugar there. So I go pretty dark, So, um, but it's, it's kind of a fine line. You've really got to make this a couple of times before you like find your sweet spot. Mind the pun. And we're starting to see coloration change. So this, at this point, um, you really need to pay really close attention and make sure that it doesn't go too far. So it will happen pretty quickly. So what we're going to do is as soon as the color is the color we think it's going to, we think is going to taste the best, we're going to get our pears straight in there uh, with the heat off. What that's going to do is stop the caramelization altogether. Now it won't set up completely hard um, and you don't want it to, you want it to stay liquid. So We'll probably, uh, we'll just play that by ear. If we do feel like these pears are, are really ice cold and they have set the caramel, uh, then we will put the heat back on pretty quickly. But usually you don't need to. The other thing we need to do once we've got the pears in there is get the butter in there and get that emulsified in. So you can see it here, it's starting to smell like caramel. We're just gonna swirl that around. And the reason that I like to do this is because you get a more even coloration. You don't want one bit to get more, uh, to get more amber or darker than the other bits. And be super careful when you're doing this stuff. This stuff is nuclear hot. If you get it on you, it will burn right through your skin. All right, that's enough for me. In with our pears very carefully. Stir those around, making sure they're all covered in caramel, all of them. Now in with your butter. So the heat, the heat's off with this and I can see that it's fine. We're not too worried about cooking these pears right now, that most of that will happen in the oven. You just wanting to make sure that you've got really nice, luscious looking caramel and the pears are completely covered in them. And you want to stir until all the butter is completely emulsified in there. Okay, I'm actually going to turn the heat back on for this one on low. Now we're just going to cook this out a little bit longer. So I want to take some of the temperature back out of those pears. While we're waiting for that to do its thing, we're taking our cakes in and we're just going to roll a bit of butter on the bottom and especially in the edges. This just helps it come out a bit easier. All right, so I've cooked that for a couple minutes longer and now it's time to start assembling it. Now I really like to use chopsticks when I'm doing this. Um, I think there's better dexterity when using chopsticks over tongs. Um, but be careful because they can be slippery. 
you know, you can take as little or as much time as you want with this step. Um, I like to kind of take my time and make it look all nice. Just start by arranging them from one point out with the thicker end facing out. And there we go. Now I used four pairs for this and to be perfectly honest, I wish I'd probably used five. So for that 20 cinnamon cake tin, I will, in the recipe, I'll put five. Uh, I'd rather have a couple of extras than not quite enough. I think it's just enough, but literally just. Anyway, pour some of that caramel in the bottom of your pan as well. Um, probably don't need all of it, but you definitely want to make sure that the bottom is completely covered like that. And it's time to put our pastry on. So pastry in. You only get one chance of this, so make sure you get it right. <laughs> if you try and lift that up now, it'll be all over. And it is bigger than the tin, which is what we wanted. So you use a chopstick or use something just to push it down the sides. It doesn't need to be touching the bottom, but you want it to kind of encase it when you roll it out. And then into the oven. All right, so it's in the oven, 180 degrees, probably 20 minutes, we'll check it. See how it goes. All right, we're done. So this took about 35 minutes in total. I checked it after 20 minutes, wasn't close. Let it another 10 and then left it another five. And this is what we're looking for. So really nice golden color, um, pastry completely cooked and a bit crunchy. My only criticism to myself with anything is that I've probably put a little bit too much caramel in it. Um, and it's pushed through in the pastry in some pieces, but not to worry, I'm sure it'll still be delicious. Pleasingly, I can see that it's still moving, which means it's gonna turn out pretty well. Um, what you don't wanna do is let this get cool in the pan or it will not turn out. So, plate on top. Quick flip. Oh, I felt it already. She's up. Just gonna let it sit there for a second, let all that caramel come down, and then the big reveal. Beautiful. So there she is, really nicely cooked pastry. The fruit's completely cooked. Nice golden amber color, stunning. So, tartatan wouldn't be a tartatan without vanilla ice cream on top. Time to taste it, I guess. Mm. So good, the flaky pastry, beautifully cooked pears. That kind of bitter caramel with the creamy ice cream. It doesn't get much better. Thank you so much for watching, Legends. Chuck me a like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're not. And we'll see you next week for a super special episode where we go to one of my favorite cities in the world. We'll see you then. Peace. Babe, you want some of this? <laughs>